All right, you can all hear me, right? I got a pretty good gym voice. So, uh, fortunately, we're not going to uh, do too much to speak. I have to have this thing on, I guess, for recording sake, but I don't really need it on. You can hear me, right? I'm good? All right, good. I'd much rather do that. I uh, appreciate all you folks being here today. I really do. It means a lot to me. It's great to have students and faculty, some alums here. And uh, it's just, uh, it, it, it means a lot. I really appreciate it in this, uh, on your busy schedule to take a few minutes, come out here a little bit and, and uh, talk. First of all, if you have, I'm sure you all have your phones with you. Just shut them off, just silence them. You're going to be using them in a minute. But for a moment, just, just put them on silence right now so they don't, don't get any phone calls. Uh, you don't need to get right now, okay? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm, I feel like it's game day a little bit. I woke up this morning and felt a, like a little combination of like, uh, you know, excited and nervous, which is what you feel like in a game day. Um, so I'm glad it's out here, though. I'm much more comfortable being out here than in an auditorium or something like that. So I don't have a whistle on right now, but other than that, I'm much more comfortable out here. Really what I'm doing today is... Um, is I want to share with you a few thoughts. Basically, today is simply uh, an opportunity I have to share some thoughts that are made highly uh, at my disposal, highly enlightened in my life experiences. And I just want to share with you a few thoughts today, and I'll introduce Jimmy in a moment here. But um, I want to appreciate the college very much with the humanities professor position. Um, I was obviously very uh, surprised and honored when I received it and I the great thing about it is um, what's really humbling about it is when I look there's actually a couple sitting right here and I look around and I look at a list the first thing I did I look at a list of who the previous humanities professors were and uh, it's, it's an incredible group and it's a, a group that I've always respected and highly revered on campus mainly because they get it the people they definitely get it and they really understand what humanics is all about. And humanics takes on many different shapes a little bit for people. It, it's kind of looked at probably a little different from everybody. The basic themes are kind of the same, but it takes on a little different look. Uh, when I think of humanics, I, I personally think of uh, leadership situations, um, things like uh, uh, selfless leaders, servant leaders, the triangle, obviously, the mind, the body, the spirit, how they all work together in unison how you try to excel at all three. These are all the things that jump to me with humanics. Uh, being a good person, I think is kind of integral to, to it. Doing the right thing, making good decisions, that kind of thing. That's what I think of. But what I really appreciate with the college, when they, when they give you this position, they don't really pigeonhole you and say, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. It's kind of like, what do you want to do? I remember running into our president here at your speech and she said, what are you going to, you're going to do someone show up, aren't you? I said, you bet I am. I was all ready for that. Uh, I'd already done a couple of talks with that, with some of the athletic teams early in the year. And I was definitely, it would take me two seconds to think that's what I really want to jump on for a little bit there, is that whole concept, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. But um, I just appreciate the freedom to, to, to go with the way I want. So when I chose the topic of show up for this, um, I can't think of a better way for me personally to define humanics than showing up. Showing up for others and hopefully in turn they show up for you. That to me, it defines humanics to me about as well as you can possibly define it. What it really takes to be there for others and in turn as they are for you during all kinds of circumstances in your life. Um, I asked Jimmy Warnock to, to present with me today um, just because, um, and Jimmy is a, a great alum and I know he was offended when I said this. It could have been a lot of alums I could have chose for this because there's so many great ones out there. I got three of them sitting here right here, right now. Dan Daly, John Kopacki, Sean Quirk. A couple guys drove up from Boston just to be here. And John drove all the way down the street from Western England to be here. So I appreciate it. <laughs> but it could, there's a lot, of, a lot of great alums out there that, that would fit the bills uh, very well. But I just, Jimmy's pretty special to me in this area. Um, and I really want to have him involved with this. Um, a lot of guys on my team are here. They've heard it during the recruiting process. Other guys have heard it. When I'm recruiting um, and, and get, get people kind of committed to the team for four years, my biggest concern is, um, is that I'm recruiting someone for 40 years, not four years. What happens beyond the four years you play here? That's 
really been my number one concern since it's day one of my coaching. And for me, that's really what it's all about. Like, what kind of person you become after four years? What have you learned uh, through the experience, through me, the other coaches, just the whole experience we've learned through Springfield College? What have you gained from that that you're taking with you in life that's helping you be a better person, a better someday, in the case of my team, a better husband, a better father, a better employee, wherever you are, just committed to what you're all about. And that's really what it's always been. Heck yeah, I want to win games, no question about it. Winning's fun, losing's not fun. So we, we want to win games, but at the end of the day, we want good people winning games. And that's what we've always tried to concentrate on. And for me, Jimmy kind of embodies that. Jimmy, when he came here, and he's going to talk a little about his experiences here at Springfield, but Jimmy, I thought, bought right into the whole humanic thing. He, he got it right away. It meant a lot to him, you could tell. He definitely embraced it and really became a big part of his life. And, um, and I think the biggest thing about Jimmy is he didn't check it at the door when he left. He learned it, embraced it, and then just took it with him through life. And he certainly continues to keep doing that, as a lot of our alums do, and as a lot of you will as well, too. But Jimmy graduated here in 01. He was a captain of the lacrosse team when he was here. He was an All-American here. He played on a really good team here. A really big part of a, a, a strong time in our program. But um, it's more, as much of the great things he did when he was here, I'm more proud of him for what he's done since then as the father he is and the, the uh, professional that he is. He's a physical education teacher, adapted PE teacher, health teacher in the South Windsor school system. And he gives back a lot to a lot of groups. And he'll talk a little bit more about that real quickly. Life is messy sometimes. Um, you bumble your way through life sometimes. You get, you get thrown um, a lot of curveballs in life sometimes. We don't know they're coming sometimes. They just kind of hit you. Um, the COVID situation has been a bit of a curveball for a lot of people, uh, some more, more than others. But it just presented some challenges for us. And then, uh, unfortunately, I'll just tell you from my own experiences, life will throw other challenges by you all through life. Hopefully none too traumatic, but nonetheless, you will encounter curveballs. Things will come your way that you're not ready for. Um, maybe it's God's blessing a little bit. Sometimes we don't know they're coming. I don't know if that would be worse if you knew something was going to happen 10 years from now. And it does. So I think maybe it's good you don't know sometimes. But I'm telling you right now, life will throw curveballs by you. There'll be job situations. There'll be relationships. There'll be things that you have their challenges for you. And like I said, hopefully none are tremendous, but there will be challenges of some kind. And are you ready for those? That's really what I've learned a lot the last three years of my life the most because of the situation in my life is how can you be ready for those? Because you really can't be ready for the specific situation coming your way. But the things you can do is be, have that support group in place, that village in your life, your friends, your family. A lot of you are on teams. I mean, that relationship part that you build and get stronger and stronger. And I think one of the keys to how you build that village or build that support group is you actively supporting and showing up for people. It's contagious. You do it, it'll come right back at you many times over. But that's how you start building that support system so when things do get complicated or tricky in life, uh, you've got people there ready to help you and be there for you as you are for them as well. Um, I went to the commencement service on Sunday and the, the woman uh, alum who's from a local school right here uh, spoke. She was tremendous. But she had a quote that I had, to, I had to steal from her, and I told her I'm stealing it from her. She was fine with it. Adversity is inevitable. Failure is optional. And I thought it was so appropriate for what we're talking about today, that adversity is inevitable of some kind or another. But it's what you do with it is, 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 is really what we're talking about a lot today. 2018, my, uh, tragically, we lost our daughter. Uh, Lindsay passed away um, giving birth to her third child. And there's no question life-changing event for us. My question for you is, were we prepared for that? No, we weren't. You really can't be prepared for that. But we had support groups in place. We had friends. We had family that have been incredible for me. My own team saved my life three years ago. No question about it. That was a support group for me. But this isn't about Lindsay, this isn't about me today. This is just about what I've learned that I'm trying to pass on to you 
as you, as you grow through life a little bit. You want to foster those groups. You want to foster those friendships, foster those relationships. You want them, by, but, but the best way to foster them is, is what are you doing about it? Are you reaching out to people? Are you, are you that person uh, going that way for people? Um, I've learned a lot the last few years, and I'm still getting trying to get better at it. Uh, I've learned a lot, and I'm trying to just pass on a little bit of information to you. But my goal is to get better at myself and continue to keep doing that for other people in my life. Uh, I'm going to take a break and introduce you to uh, Jim Warnock for a second, and then go from there. Thank you, Coach. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you, Coach. Um, I don't know if I can do justice to explain what, what all that meant to me. Um, so I couldn't have fathomed that 26 years ago when I stepped on campus in 1996 for an official recruiting visit that I'd be standing here uh, 25 years later with the op opportunity to, to stand next to a major mentor in my life and, and give back a little bit. Um, and watching people walk in, uh, there's some really meaningful people in the crowd, that faces that were part of my story here. Um, and it's a special place where you can come back 25 late years later and those same faces are still here, still doing it. Um, it really anchors you and helps you build that foundation so you can go out from here and do great things. Right? So uh, a little bit about my story. Um, obviously, I went here. Uh, I met my wife here. Uh, my brother followed me here. We wore the same jersey. Uh, he met his wife here. We're, we're a Springfield family. I, I get to coach for a club lacrosse team that practices here at points, and um, to watch my son run around this field is, is far more gratifying than I could have ever imagined. Um, so to those of you who are part of my story, thank you so much. Um, I wouldn't be here without you. Let me tell you a little bit about my curveball. My curveball took place on October 17th, 2012. I teach phys ed not far from here in South Windsor, Connecticut. A colleague of mine had uh, picked up a bag of soccer balls and some cones, and we were ready to go set up a field. And we walked down the front of the school, took a right, walked across the access road. Um, and the next thing I remember is waking up in an ambulance trying to figure out where I was. Uh, we had been hit by a car after a, a former student had dropped uh, a sibling off and they were leaving and there's some really bad sun glare and they, didn't, they were doing about 30 miles an hour of the parking lot and didn't see us. So I wake up a little bit later in an ambulance trying to figure out what's going on and where am I. Um, and on that day there's so many people that showed up for me. So many people in, this, in the stands right now that showed up for me in meaningful ways and took care of me and took care of my family and Coach and his family were one of those. Um, and not only that those people showed up but they continued to show up. They continued to put into to me and my existence when they didn't have to. Um, and I'm forever grateful for that. So I, I, I work in a world of, and I say this a lot to my students and the guys I coach, um, I, I live in a world of look like, sound like. And I use that phrase a ton. We talk about being great teammates. We talk about uh, the way the game should be played, right? Or the way we should behave or the way things go. And I always ask, the guys I'm coaching and, and my 12-year-old and my 9-year-old, they'll tell you they're sick of hearing it. But tell me more about what that looks like. Tell me more about what that sounds like. Tell me the observable behaviors behind that. Right? So we spend a lot of time talking about those simple little things. And I live in a world of, of observables. I believe as Ben Franklin said at one point, well, well done is better than well said. And that's kind of one of our big themes in my house um, and with the teams I work with. And that's a big part of what I got from here. Um, and I didn't realize, like so many things in life, that the things I'm learning, I learned years ago. It's like that book, Everything You Need to Know, you learned in kindergarten. Anyone ever heard of it or read it? Right? And when it came to showing up, I'm going to ask you to continue to echo what Coach said. Start to formulate those look like, sound like behaviors, those observable behaviors, as to what showing up looks like for you in your world. Because we're going to constantly circle back to that a little bit. So for me, it first started when I said I stepped on campus here in 1996 and I got in the car afterwards. I was just telling, I've told this coach this story a bunch. My mom is a complete pain in, in my backside, right? Like most moms are if they're doing their job right. And she had me labeled as a Springfield College student early on. And I was like, mom, it's too close. It, I grew up 20 minutes from here. It's way too close. I'm not going there. No way. We stepped on campus and people looked me in the face and said hello. And people held doors. That's when I started to learn in little ways without even knowing it, not until like 25 years later, that that's what showing up was. Ironically enough, I got, in my, I got out of the car here 
couple hours ago, the parking lot security guard, I was, I, I, don't, think I, I don't think I had two feet on the ground yet. I was like, hey, how's your day going? I was like, oh, where'd she come from? Um, and it starts in those moments. So I'm going to give you kind of, again, like coach, uh, some advice, some advice that came from, from my time here, from our endless conversations, from a lot of you in the stands that have been part of my story and my three C's for showing up. Uh, there was a point in my academic career here where those three C's would have resembled my, uh, my report card as well. But that's a different story for a different time. Um, so the first thing is, is I keep going back to that holding the door. And the first thing showing up for others does, and sometimes Coach, Coach and I were having a conversation just this morning about leadership. And I feel like at times we, we put leadership on such a pedestal that, other peop that some people feel like they can't be leaders because we've made it too big. Um, and showing up can be kind of like that, but showing up can be so simple. And I keep going back to that door holding, right? So the first thing showing up does in little ways is it connects us with others. There's our first C, it connects us. It does something for both the giver and the receiver, right? Think about those moments that you've probably had countless times on this campus walking to where you need to be, and someone 10, 15 yards ahead of you stops and holds the door. They give a few seconds of their time, of their day, just to pass the door. It doesn't happen in a lot of other places. After I got snuck up on by the ninja security guard in the parking lot, I walked around the front of the building and I got five hellos and had three different people hold doors for me. And I was like, whew, I'm home. It's a nice place to be, right? So for the giver, they get something too. They get a sense of understanding empathy. They get a sense of knowing that your actions is simple enough in little ways can impact other people positively. And biggest to me, they taught me to be aware of my surroundings, right? There isn't a day 25 years after leaving here where I don't open a door and stop for a second to go, is there anyone behind me? I didn't know it when I was here, but this school gave me the chance to practice showing up without even knowing it, okay? The second C, Coach already hit on a little bit, and it's, it's, it's contagious. It's contagious. And we can talk about cliches and like throwing that rock in the pond and the ripples go out, right? We can do that, and it's cliche. Would you agree with that? Crowd participation. Up and down for yes, side to side for no. All right, we got it. Cool. Um, in those moments, cliches are cliches, but they, they've lived as long as they have because there's, a, there's, a, there's truth in there, right? And it's contagious. So... You show up for others in little ways. You hold that door, right? That person comes in, you say, thank you, you pass the door, you let them go. The chance of them doing that for someone else goes up how much? I mean, you've all been there, right? I, I got to tell you, I play some really silly games sometimes, and I let people go at, at like four-way stops all the time and then see if I get a wave. Does anyone else play these games, or am I the only one? My record's nine in a row. I got to tell you, that last person who didn't wave, he broke my record at, I held it together, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, it, it's those little things that how it becomes contagious, right? And the third C for me is it takes courage. It takes courage to show up. Does it take courage to hold the door? No, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of courage to hold the door for someone. It doesn't take a whole lot of courage to make sure as you walk around, you make eye contact and say hello. But there are times where you're going to show up where it's going to take courage. I say to my, I don't know where I heard this, but I, I, it's been my mantra with the teams I coach a lot the last several years. And it basically says, let's be brave enough to completely stink at something new. Because it takes, it takes guts. It takes guts to continually show up and try something new until it's not new anymore. But there's going to be times when you show up and you have nothing to say, you don't have the words, they're not there, because we don't know what to say, right? There's those moments. And in those moments where not knowing what to say, there's a vulnerability. And that vulnerability can be gut-wrenching. You with me? You been in one of those moments? Right, and if you're anything like me, I'm a fixer. We have any other fixers in the audience? I'm a fixer. So not only can I not say anything, but if this is happening to someone I care about, someone who's in my tribe, I can't fix it. And that's my only goal, is to try to make it better. 
So not only does the vulnerability come up, but then this unnerving sense of helplessness. And sometimes you show up and just showing up's enough. And, and I want us to stress those little things, like just be, just be there. And sometimes that's really, really all it takes. I'm gonna ask you all to take out your phones and hold them up for me, or if you're like me, I'm still a pen and paper person, um, so I carry a pad wherever I go. It's usually right here, stashed in my wallet. Um, I want you to go into your phone or on a piece of paper to wherever you can jot down notes. And I need you to start to think about five names. Five names of five people who have shown up for you. And we say show up, we're talking about curveballs, and sometimes the curveballs life throws, if we have to classify them as positive versus negative, they kind of end up in those moments where we need support. But we're not just talking about the support moments, we're talking about the celebrations as well. Who are those five names who have showed up for you in little ways? Maybe it's someone here at Springfield, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a, a parent, a, a guardian, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a teacher, a coach. Maybe it's your neighbors down the street Maybe it's your best friend's mom, because you know what? She always had a way to hear you differently than your mom. And I want you to just put those names in there right now. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. And if you're not putting it in your phone, that's fine. Just think about it and store those five names. Now the challenge becomes, and I learned this, on this turf, because not only did I have the opportunity to come here, uh, I had the opportunity to live on campus most summers, whether it was working Special P, and if Kathy Smith had benefits, I'd probably still be here working Special P. Um, I lived on this turf for lacrosse camps. I lived on this turf getting to be around some really great coaches all summer and learn and absorb. And one of the things that we'd end one of those camps with, it was a talk that, that was given every time, and it was about how do you pay it forward, how do you say thank you, that you encouraged some sort of debt, right? Those people showed up for you. So I'm going to challenge you, coach is going to challenge you, that when you leave here at some point in the next couple days to come back to that list, right? To come back to that list in some way, shape, or form. Reach out and say thank you and explain why you're saying thank you. It means the world, right? It means the world to the people who are hearing it, and it's important. So that's, that's kind of my part right here. Um, but again, the challenge is to, at some point, come back to those five names in the next couple of days and say thank you. Told you he'd be good. I knew what I got with him. So, in summary, there's some things I really want to leave you with. And I, obviously, a lot of things we hope, really hope you take note of and remember and take to heart. But I got a couple really key questions for you here and a couple key comments I really want you to take out of this, if you would, please. One, my one question, you just did that with Jimmy. And who's, who, who has shown up for you? But I want you to think about the word continuing to show up for you. It goes right along with it. Who continually shows up with you? Well, that's probably what you wrote down. Probably those names had that word with it. The other question I have for you is, who do you, you don't have to write these down, but just think about it. Who do you need to show up for? Who do you really need to show up for? And here's, the third question is one that I've been hitting myself in the mirror a lot with over the years. Who do you wish you'd showed up for? I think a lot of times about that, there's some people in my life that I wish I'd showed up for them more, you know? It just happens, you know? You, you, I've been to wakes, I've been to funerals, it's very emotional, you hug them, you, you feel sorry, you say all these nice things to them. Maybe you go home and send them a card, and then that's it. You just, we just get busy with our lives, we move on. I've seen that toward me, I've seen that, me, me do that to other people too. I've seen some really tragic things happen to some people I know, and I think I was there for a while for them, and then I just got caught up in my own life and then you kind of move on a little bit. And it's human nature. And I don't want you to beat yourself up for that because it's a learning process. I'm still learning about how to do a better job with that. Here's some really key things I want you to really take from here. Showing up is intentional. It's intentional. 
you really make the effort to show up. It's intentional. You think about it. You can't, you really, it's intentionally doing it. Not just haphazardly do it. But somebody needs it. You know they need it. You know you need it. But how much, how much it make you feel good when something intentionally shows up for you? It has to be sustained. It has to be repetitive. If it's just here for a little while then gone, it probably doesn't really work. You're really not satisfying any needs for anybody. You're really not helping them in the big picture. It has to be sustained and keep going with it. It can be done in a really simple way. Like I said, you, may, you go to some tragic event, it's kind of hard, but over time you want to keep showing up for somebody, or it doesn't have to be a tragic event, just a simple event in their life, a divorce, a job loss, uh, some kind of economic situation in their life, something like that. And you just know it would be really nice to show up for them. But it doesn't have to be at the same level all the time. It can be a simple text. It can be a pat on the back. It can be a how you doing. It doesn't have to be a lot. The first week of school, I'm walking out to my car to, to, to up here in the parking lot. Teddy France, hand up Teddy, please. If you don't know Teddy, get to know him. He's the best. Teddy's driving in. He rolls his window down. He looks me right in the eye, and he says, Keith, how was your summer? He wasn't asking me how my golf game was this summer or be going on any cool vacations. He was like, how was your summer? He knows my daughter passed away on the 4th of July. So the summers are hard, very difficult, you know, just the timing. But he wanted to know, how was my summer? And I knew exactly what he was asking me. And that was showing up for me. Thank you. That simple comment. It wasn't much. We didn't, and I just said, hey, we're, we're okay. Thank you. That's all. It wasn't a big thing. I just said, we're doing okay. But thank you for asking. It means a lot. It goes a long way when you just do that little simple thing like that. How was your summer? It could be uh, Coach Milady leaving me meals like she's always out. Uh, how many times when I come out to practice and there's a meal sitting over right there? She lets me a meal for my wife and I. Simple act of kind, simple act of kindness like that. That's showing up. So many people. I had a bunch of text messages today. Good luck today. You know, little things like that go a long way. Uh, really important like that. Um, Pretty much the last comment I want to make, is, and Jimmy kind of addressed a little bit, is um, sometimes the best thing you can do for your friends, the best way you can show them is just listen. Just listening. We're all not very good at it. I'm not very good at it either. But it's something you can really work on, just listening. Um, and don't try to fix everything. My wife gets so mad at me when she's just talking to me. She, she tells me something. And, of course, being a guy, being a stupid guy, I just want to fix it. And she's just, no, just shut up and listen, please. <laughs> That's all I'm really asking you to do is just shut up and listen to me. It's not going to get fixed. It probably doesn't need to be fixed. I'm just frustrated. So just shut up and listen to me. I'm like, okay, I'll shut up and listen. <laughs> and then I forget two weeks later, and then she tells me something, I try to fix it. And then we go from there. All right. Last thing we're going to do today is I want to talk real quickly about this. This yellow helmet we started wearing on my, in, in our program. Um, guys will get awarded that helmet every week. They'll wear it for a week of practice, and then we're doing something a little different this year where that athlete will determine who gets a helmet next week and wears it for practice. And basically, the helmet is about what we're talking about. It's given to an athlete on our team that shows up every day. They show up in all the little ways. They work hard. They're a good teammate on and off the field, do making good decisions, helping people, helping people be the best version of themselves. It's just showing up, all the humanist philosophies and the way they go about themselves in business and practice every day and just really show up for each other and just the way they model it, all right? And it's just been really effective. I think it's been a really cool thing we do. Um, um, and what Jimmy's done with it is um, he's taken it to another little bit different level where not every team wears helmets. Lots of teams don't wear helmets, so it doesn't really work for them. So he started these yellow wristbands that he's going to talk about in a quick second here. And basically that wristband it says on it, show up. And it's a really great reminder of how important it is to show up for people in and, and every opportunity. And then um, I'm going to let you tell yeah. a little bit more about that. So through countless conversations with Coach over time and then having the chance to come up and, and, and reconnect uh, with, with the guys on the team and, and, and talk a little bit, I, I left here one day and was driving home and going, this is... Not only is it a great message, but it's, it's a simple and genuine message. And, and I believe, you know, one of the greatest things is when you can find those two things together in genuine ways, it becomes more tangible. 
right? So I was leaving here and driving home and just thinking about how do I do this? How can I, how can I bring this to the, the, young, the young men that I'm coaching? When I say young, they're 12. Um, for all of you who have had 12-year-olds, we might, I might need some advice later. Uh, it's a weird combination of things. A uh, little child, not quite a teen, but want to be everything all at once, right? Um, and more importantly, it was something that I needed my own sons to hear, right? It was that kind of genuine, like, this is one of those moments that we need to talk about. So, and I said, not all teams wear helmets, um, and we came up with this, uh, this bracelet idea. So kids from my team would, you know, I ordered a bunch of bracelets. I, I asked for coach for permission, and said, is this, are you okay with this? He said, yeah. Uh, so we ordered some bracelets, and we started awarding each week. You get a bracelet to a couple, couple people who showed up and met all the criteria coach covered, right? It's intentional, it's sustained, it's meaningful, and it's not just you played well that day and you scored a bunch of goals. Right? I coach lacrosse if you haven't figured it out. Um, it, it's more than that. But we added a wrinkle, and the wrinkle was if, I, if you earned a bracelet, you got a second bracelet. And they had to go back to their five people in their phones and present them with a bracelet and have that conversation and have that moment of connectedness and trying to get 12-year-olds to build up the courage to have awkward conversations. Because if you haven't figured this out yet, life is pretty much just one awkward conversation after another until it's not awkward anymore and you just keep having it. Right? So th that was the goal. And it was a very simple one. It was, it was just trying to be grassroots and genuine. And it took on a life of its own. You know, and I asked, I asked my teams and I asked the families of those teams, um, if you're willing to do that, take a picture, send me a video, if you're willing to share part of your story about what showing up is mean and who you gave the bracelet to. And we asked 12 year olds to get up and not only talk to the person that they gave the bracelet to, but to report back to us as a team. And they did. And for those of you who are in education as majors, the rest of you already know this. There's this moment in teaching or coaching when you challenge, you know, your students or your players and you step back and they crush it and then they look at you and you're like, I didn't really plan for them to get that to go that well. What do I do now? And that's kind of what happened. I, I had people sending me emails saying, I gave my bracelet to my dad because he's struggling with alcoholism and he's battling to show up for us today. And I'd take those pictures and I would just send them to coach. And, and that was kind of it. And then, you know, one team turned into two and two to three. And last week I talked to a bunch of 11-year-old girls on a soccer program. Just said, hey, here's what it means. And here's what the bracelets are. Um, and it's been, been really, really cool. So at the end of this, some tables set up over here to the left by the flowers. You're welcome to grab a bracelet. We hope that you do and you wear it and you wear it as a reminder in a few ways that yes, you can show up for, for a lot of different people in a lot of different ways, both big and small. But if you're willing to, to take a second bracelet as well and that second bracelet being one that you're gonna pay forward and have that conversation. And if you're willing to keep it with, keep it with you and have that conversation and get it on video or send a picture Create an artifact that we can share electronically. And over the next couple weeks, you're going to get information on how to do that. And one of our goals um, that we kind of talked about, I didn't, Coach Bugby brought it up actually, but he was like, I'm not the tech guy, so help me through this. Um, is, uh, <laughs> is to build a kind of a, an electronic social media patchwork quilt of what showing up means to, to the Springfield College community. You don't have to. It's totally up to you. Um, I will tell you that watching the young boys I work with struggle through all of this and stand up in front of their teammates and have conversations with each other and come back and tell me about who they gave it to and why uh, has been a an incredible experience. So that, that's the challenge. They're there. Please grab one on the way out. Grab two. Um, and, uh, and if you can and you're willing to, just create an artifact and hold on to it. You'll be getting the emails. Check your emails. And the last thing I'll leave, the last thing I'll leave you with is uh, if you notice uh, on the helmet and on the bracelet, it's got, um, it has obviously show up on it, but also has my daughter's initials on it. And the reason, the reason why they're there, this isn't about Lindsay. This isn't, uh, this isn't about, 
you know, uh, a memory of her or something like that. It's really more what she represented. All right, she captained every team she ever played for, captained two sports here. Uh, she was a leader. Um, I coached her as a, as a little girl. Um, she always showed up. She, every game was important to her. Every practice was important to her. But every relationship was important to her. She was a great, great mother, great daughter, great wife. She showed up. It was important to her to be the best she could be in everything she did. And that's, as I say to my players too, her name's on that helmet not because it's about her, it's about what she represents. And we want to be like that. And she's challenged me to show up in life, and I'm challenging you to show up in life for people. And um, I really appreciate you giving me some time today. Whatever you take this with, however you take this with you is fine, whatever. But it makes you think about some things or some people in your life that you want to, um, you know, maybe reconnect with in some ways. It's never a bad thing. So welcome to Grab a Brace on your way out. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank you.